Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Welcome to another episode of Chingo Chats. What episode number is this? This is probably going to be, I believe, 79 or 80. Awesome. And we're coming at you before recording Red Pill Tamales. So as you could tell, man, you know, I've only been talking politics for about 30 minutes in my kitchen with my babysitter, who's like, no, pues, ¿qué, qué voy a hacer? Pues la gasolina, ni modo que tenemos que castigar a Rusia porque Ucrania, y pues no, pues ni modo, vamos a comer spam, y pues ni modo, a comprar gallinas para que haya blanquillo. Digo. That's what the conversation was this morning? That's hilarious. Yeah, man, I'm trying to tell her, I was like, Luisa, if you just pay attention to the inflation rate, Luisa, look at the price of commodities, Luisa, it's about Main Street, not Wall Street. I am on tour, Legalized Freedom Tour, uh, thank you so much to everyone that came out to Raleigh, Thank you so much to everyone that came out to McAllen, Texas. Uh, Maida Flores and her husband were in the house. Uh, she's like, man, some some big news going on with her in Congress. She's either like about to run, win. Yes, yeah, I believe she went. She won her primary in a Okay, slide. so she won her primary. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, I didn't know what. I was just like, congratulations, because it's something. I don't know. Is she in McAllen or in, in her surrounding area? Do you know? She's somewhere, somewhere in there. the valley. Yeah, but they showed up to the show. And, Badass. Um, yeah, they were like, man, it was great to have some laughs, man. We had a you know a stressful week. And her husband is uh, part of Border Patrol. And Border Patrol, when they come to the shows, they always have the best gifts. Really? Yeah, bro. He gave me a badass pocket knife with a uh, little like U.S. Border Patrol insignia like engraved in the on the side of the blades in case I got shank your bitch ass. They're going <laughs> to they know it was me. How the times have changed. Yeah, man. Uh, next stop, Naples, Florida, March 16th through the 17th. It's going to be a St. Patty's Day exclusivo. After that, West Palm Beach, Florida, April 3rd. By the way, airline tickets to Naples are out of the motherfucking wazoo. Astronomical. So, yeah, so don't be surprised if this is a motherfucking road trip on your bitch ass. I'm going to pull up, pull up like a motherfucker. So we have Naples up first, uh, West Palm Beach. We have Tacoma, Washington. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to drive there. Uh, April 7th, Nashville, Tennessee, April 14th. Corpus Christi, Texas, May 5th through the 7th. Arlington, Texas, May 12th through the 15th. New Braunfels, Texas, May 20th. Abilene, May 21st. Lubbock, May 22nd. Bryan College Station, two shows, May 28th. San Angelo, June 3rd. Odessa, June 4th. Austin, I want to see all my patriots in Austin, man. You know, that is June 9th. Uh, just hit up the website. After that, we have Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, Ontario, Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, Arizona, San Jose, Brea, California, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison. I'm glad that there's so many Texas uh, dates on here because if push comes to shove <laughs> and this regime and, and the U.S. dollar loses its reserve status and inflation hits 9% and the dollar, hit, I mean, the gas price hits $9 a gallon, guess what? All the Texas shows are still happening. Uh, the show must go on yeah, in on, Texas. Ontario, Denver, Chicago, some of y'all, uh, you know, Oxnard, San Jose, you know, y'all kind of far. So uh, all this is contingent. <laughs> uh, there are some... Con- Subject to change. There are some concessions and contingencies at play. Legalized Freedom Tour, hit it up right now, chingobling.com. Big shout out. Beep, beep, beep. Yo, I just did a podcast, Rock and Roll James. Yeah. Bro, he he got that morning voice. He's been in radio for 30 years. We just knocked that out when we were in McAllen. Y'all go check that out. He's got he's getting thousands and thousands of views off our interview. And uh he's got one of them. And he was just Nombre Carnal. <sighs> you know, it was like a morning show. Ta, 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 ta. He's hitting them buttons. But um yeah, man. Uh what, big shout what, out. What go ahead. Uh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no. What market was he doing radio in? In the in the valley? Somewhere, yeah. And he interviewed Selena like what? 50 times. Wow. If you ever look up any old Selena interview clips, chances are it's him. It's a young young version of him. Wow, that's dope. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, had a great time. Big shout out to them. And um, shout out to all the members on the Discord, all the members of the Thea, all the members of the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Now, more than ever, it's crucial. I'm about to pull a Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Once again, I'm asking you to join the Thea. Once again, I'm asking you for your help. Y'all, y'all see the gas price, man. Y'all see what's going on. You know, it's affecting everything. Now more than ever, uh, it's very important that we stay informed and we have clear lines of communication because as all this stuff is popping off, you're going to see more and more censorship, and we'll get, we'll get into it more on RPT. This is Chingo Chats, but if you have not joined us, Hit it up right now, patreon.com forward slash red pill 
tamales. It is crucial right now. I'm coming at you like Bernie Sanders. It is very crucial right now. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. They're going to be like, man, Ching on a mission. For sure. So the first week of, the, of March, we kicked off with about half a dozen new patrons. So I welcome everybody to the TIA. And it just so happened that they signed up during podcast. So we all gave them a shout out. So we want going forward. I mean, we shout out people in the Discord all the time because they're super active and, and they really do make uh, that community what it is. And if you're listening and haven't joined, you can join and, and be a part of that as well. Mm-hmm. So we'll be shouting out people as, as they join um, a couple of other podcasts have a have like a, a bit where they just try to encourage the silliest names you know instead of using a real name like encourage to use a silly name and i mean if you're will, if you guys are willing to you, you can always change your name on your patreon and on the discord but if you want to try to make chingo laugh and come like, up with the funniest uh, name riata 69 exactly. uh, left a comment yeah, exactly <laughs> so use whatever name you want when you sign up and then you can change it later if you want uh but also back to Maida real quick before we get into this and then later rpt Maida flores she won in a landslide, 60%, 60.5% of her vote. Ding, 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 ding. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, so it'll be her and the incumbent, uh, Vicente Gonzalez Jr. So so when, when, the, when the venue opened up, right, the theater, um, the historic Cine del Rey in McAllen, right? Very cool place. So the green room is a little cramped, right? It's a very Is it like the Raleigh theater. kind of ring, uh, uh, green room? The Good Nights green room? Somewhat. Okay. Someone, it's yeah, it's probably less. Glamorous. Oh, wait, this is the one downstairs, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And they removed the staircase, it's an old theater, right? I think like motherfucking like Cantinflas performed there and shit, real yeah. time. But anyway, so I was chilling in the balcony area, like as, as the crowd's being seated down at the bottom, and there's a bar down there that which we can kind of overlook. And uh, a gentleman was like buying a drink, but he's kind of like trying to get my attention and shit. And this is before the show. I'm not trying to cause a commotion. I'm not trying to like, you know what I'm saying? Be all, let me go down there and shit. And we got a whole <laughs> fucking, then I'm in trouble. Hey, pendejo, hide, motherfucker. It ain't, <laughs> it ain't VIP uh, time right now. So so this gentleman, we kind of make eye contact. He's like, man, come on, man. Let me get where what you drinking? I'm just, I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm not really drinking right now. We're doing a weight loss challenge. You know what I'm saying? We just I'm started trying, with Mind Mindset too. Yeah, I'm trying to start my, you know, I'm trying to start the tour off right. I got to stay hydrated. I can't, you know, I'm old. Because that tour, that little trip just beat us up, man. I don't know what it was. But anyway. Well, I can imagine the diet wasn't necessarily on point. Correct. We could talk about that as well. Um, so anyway, homeboy's like, man, come on, man. What you want? I was like, man, let me just get a tequila shot. Fuck it. And so I like kind of walked down the stairs a little bit to like kind of shake his hand. He's like, hey, man, I'm, I'm Myra's husband. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So I, then I really felt bad. I was like, man, this dude probably thinks I'm stuck up. You know what I mean? This motherfucker trying to avoid eye contact and shit. But hopefully he's listening now. Yeah, no, everybody, man, come on, man, I'm down to earth. You know, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not tripping. But anyway, so she won by landslide. Yeah, I don't think I've ever. I mean, read a comment of all the things that people might say about you, especially considering uh, starting RPT now back in 2020. There's never been a comment about you not being approachable. Like once people approach you anywhere, they're like, yeah, oh, he's always nice. He's always very like down to earth. So you've got that going I'm, I'm sure there's some out there. Probably. It's probably like not. a little miscommunication. Like, man, I'm in a hurry. Yeah. Or oh, I could, you know, I didn't know if it was a friend or foe type situation. The last time we were there, we had that big ass after party next door or down the street at the, uh, whatever it was, Suerte, I think. Yeah. And that was a little sketch at a minute. You know, got a little like, uh, yeah, hey, I, uh, I had to tell Rob, you know, look alive. Look alive. And I didn't, I knew Rob well, but I we had never been in that type of situation. You know, I was like, I know Rob did a little jujitsu. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm had to unleash the beast. We're minding our own business up here in the, on our corner and all of a sudden he's like, hey, look alive, look alive. And I'm like, oh, all right, scan the room. Rob's like, scan I the, don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm like, hey, man. Room. Scan the room. We in the nightclub, bro. There's alcohol and there's, there's egos and shit. Got to scan the room. So you really hadn't noticed at the time? No, I wasn't. You didn't peep the energy? I did, well, when we walked in, everybody was so just happy to see you that I just kind of like went to turn my own business and let you do your thing. And then all of a sudden, when I turn back around, you're like, hey, look alive. I was, I was like, like, hey, man, you can't mind your own business, bro. <laughs> you part of the entourage. You're not here to mind your own business. Come on, man. You corn fed, bro. We're going to have to put your, your strength to that's, the test. Yeah, 100%. No, but it was a good night. All, all in all, like, that's always a good time in McAllen, Fucking I can imagine. Hit him with your beard. That's ah, I didn't straighten. I've been straightening it, but I didn't straighten it today because it gets a little too long. Oh, when you hit it with the with, with the, the actual little, straightener, uh-huh. yeah. Well, that that's nice texture yeah. right there, sir. This is bed head or bed beard, I should say. Man, you know, I couldn't do it. I got too many grays right now. I said, you know what? I got to keep my shit short. No, dude, you should really let it grow. With the grays, a hundred percent. There's some people who have a thousand percent, a thousand. They, people have a some people have a pattern where it'll be gray like just in the middle, and you almost look like you're dying your beard on purpose. It'll be like black and then just gray. I feel like you could really pull it off. Yeah, I don't know what it's gonna do because I ain't gonna lie, bro. There's some gray on the sides too. 
But not as much. Like, you can see you're probably going to have that, like, all gray down the middle looking like a rock star and shit. I don't know how long that's going to take. That's that's a big sacrifice, bro. No, and then I'm going to be in the in-between stage. Then I got to still go to the barber. And in this economy, come on, man. Gas about to hit two, $200 a barrel. They still want to open the pipelines. But we'll talk about that on RPT. Yeah, it's hard not to talk about that. It's pretty our, outrageous. Our elites are uh, fucking us over. They want it, they want the dollar to use uh, to lose its reserve status. After that, brace yourselves. I need to look into like hydroponic, motherfucking something. Like we gotta grow something. We gotta have like lights and shit. What type of stuff can you grow with like lights in a garage? Like, can you grow tomatoes and shit? Oh, oh, dude, you can grow so much. Well, and what this is like still with soil. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. just put the light on it. I'm actually gonna pull something up. Um, there's a, there's a bunch of YouTube channels I used to like binge watch uh, about like urban survival shit. It was it was kind of survival. <laughs> st- <laughs> no, no, no. Kind of yes. That's a, that's a guilty pleasure. Do you pleasure. miss me yet? Do you miss me yet? It's a guilty pleasure. I'm watching the survival videos. And I'm like, God, I wish Trump was around. I feel really you know high anxiety right now. But uh, no, it was like urban farmers. So people that were in primarily actually Canada, where it's nothing but snow. They have almost no sun or no like. Like you always say, you have no shade or you have no sun back here. It's too shade. There's still stuff you could grow, right? Especially in that, whatever that planter that's yeah, become yeah. like a toy bin, a sandbox yeah, yeah, for the kids. Uh-huh. And um, I'm gonna pull it up so you can see. But dude, you can grow a lot of stuff, especially like certain mixed greens and vegetables and, and whatnot, and peppers. Uh, my, my wife sent me. Uh, I don't know who sent this to her, but oh, I think the realtor sent mm-hmm. it to her. She showed it to me, and I'm like, you know, you ain't finna move to Cyprus. So it's like an acre. Right. It's an mm-hmm. acre. And then the house, the house ain't that huge. It's not that big. The house is like same as, you know what I mean? It's like, OK, why we thought we needed more space. Yeah. But it's an acre. And right away, I'm like, ooh, we could pull a thug nasty out here. Bro, my dad calls me randomly the uh, day before yesterday. He's like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, ah, just entertaining some of Don's families in town. Uh, he's like, OK. That's cool. That your dad speaks English. But go on. Oh, yeah. He that's we, super cool. We only speak in English. That's that's amazing. I don't even know what that's like. And uh, well, and then again, my mom only speaks Spanish. So he's like, hey, what are you doing? Just chilling. He goes, hey, because uh, him and I are always talking about property and what's going on out back where I grew up. And he goes, hey, uh, uh, I think his name is Servando. Servando's brother is selling uh, that that uh, barn dominium he just finished with two acres on it. I was like, how much? He's like, I think he's going to sell it for 300. I was like, that's it? Man, show me that. Bro, it's Bro, nice. Bro, where is that? No, I can't say it on air. Come Would on, relax. Send me that yesterday. Because look, uh, real quick, and I'm going to let you finish, Taylor. Okay. Beyonce had one of the best videos. <laughs> Dude, you know how how long I've been working, Marisol. Bro, hey, get ready with them buttons. Okay, dude. which one? You got any buttons? <laughs> yeah, anything? I mean, I'm, I might need some sound effects. Okay, I got the RPT ones loaded Just up. Just program. We're good. We're good. Whatever you want. Okay. It could be a bomb explosion, okay. a, a, a rooster. Go, 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 go. Fucking size. Ese mero. 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 Like I said, I'm inspired by rock and roll James, bro. You gotta like have it. you gotta have buku sound effects. You know how long I've been working, my wife. Trying to massage the idea of, uh, like, I'll be like, yep, look at these people saying on Twitter, get out of cities. <laughs> you know, cities ain't where it's at. It's only going to get worse with everything happening. So with everything happening, I might have been able to scratch the surface. Because the problem is, it's, it's like, if we move to Cyprus, it's going to take you two hours to take your 13-year-old to school in Pearland. She's like, you're not going to want to do that. It's 5 a.m. type shit. And then if we move to Pearland or Alvin or something down there, Sugarland, whatever, it's like, you know, the babysitter, she don't get on the freeway. She's going to ride feeder for two hours. So it's like, okay, so now what? Go on. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's where it stayed. Like, I don't know what surface you scratched after that because she's not set on moving anywhere. Yeah, but I'm hitting her with all these facts about the U.S. dollar losing its reserve status. Um, Russia and China clicking up now. Uh, you know, price of gas is like historic. Yeah. So, uh, well, behind, so this barn dominium is probably about, I don't know, it's probably 2,500, 35, between 25 and 3,500 square feet. It's pretty big. It's really nice. And it's all modern. They just finished it not too long ago. And it sits on two acres. And behind it, they have another 10. So he doesn't know if the 10 go with the two mm. or how they're dividing that up or whatever. So it's a pretty cool area. Fuck. Uh, yeah. Which is just weird to think that, like, man, is it like, do I want to, like, anybody want to invest out there? And, like, who wants to? How, wait, was that Needville? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that's how much past you? 10 minutes. Okay. So, 
all in all, it's not too bad. Like between now, probably in the next five years, everything's expanded. The city's like, expanding. Oh yeah, the whole area is expanding. I mean, Highway Thirty Six and and Fifty Nine. Once it meets those two parallel like sections, are expanding from just two lanes to like three plus. Fuck it. Everybody will yeah. have to be a Zoom guest. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think we'll have anybody in person. But I mean, there's a Sugarland Airport, you know. No shit. Yeah, that's the Sugarland Airport. Yeah, but Southwest don't fly out of there. No, I don't know who does actually. But at the, these flight, bro, these flight prices are—I don't know what the fuck going on. But yeah, um, Don Sisters, you know, they're, they're trying to plan some stuff for like their kids in spring break or whatever, and they're like, we can't afford to get everybody on a plane. It's literally like they're gonna p- maybe plan to drive to wherever they're going, like South. And then that's and then be yeah, high. and then we're like, what are you talking about? It's it gas is twice as expensive as it was a year ago. So sit your ass at home and let's just hope that everything we can weather the storm or figure something out. Motherfucker, brace yourself. Uh, We've been talking about this shit on RPT, everything that's going on behind the scenes. So make sure y'all go tune in. If you're if you're like uh, averse to political talk, like if you don't you avoid it and you don't like to fuck with it and it's just ah, it's uh, it's over my pay grade. It's ice gateway. So I don't know if we should talk about this on RPT, but you said you have a buddy that's like. Like, yeah. you try to tell him stuff about it, and he's like, eh, what am I going to do? Like, yeah, yeah. I got to eat spam, I got to eat spam. <laughs> we'll talk about RBT for sure, but the, the gist of it was that, you know, he works in retail, and all the prices are going up. So as they're having to reprice everything in their store, people <laughs> are complaining about it, right? And his, his philosophy, or his perspective, I guess, is just that, I don't know a lot about it, so all I can tell the customer is like, I mean, just the way it is right now. And like, that's it. He doesn't really think much about it. Gas, he's like... What am I not going to get gas in my car? Like, I mean, yeah, it's four dollars, but it's what it is. Like, that's just everything is just like it is what it is. I don't care why it is this way. I don't so care. he he chooses his battles and he tries not to stress. Is that the reason? Or he for thinks, sure, or he thinks it's super confusing on purpose, and I'm just going to avoid it. No, he just thinks that that's just like almost like it's a like a like not natural selection, but it's just a part of like our evolutionary process for everything to get more expensive. So oh, so he thinks that even if Trump was in office, this would all still be happening regardless. Like yeah, it's yeah. out of oh yeah, like it's not the president's fault and right. and the uh, like Pelosi. Schumer and, oh no no those, elites they're not he's not putting those pins together so if you showed him old footage of young Joe Biden he was more alert basically saying you know and I told Russia you know what are you gonna do uh partner up with China <laughs> good luck what are you gonna do work with Iran <laughs> good luck like yeah literally what's happening they knew these could have been the outcome yeah no he'd just be like I mean yeah I, I guess maybe like I don't know these so people. is he a Democrat hardcore because his girlfriend is probably uh, just because she, you know, that's the kind of info he gets by motherfucking by proxy, by proxy. Right. So it's I don't know, man. It's just some people are going to live their lives completely oblivious to it. And they welcome being oblivious to it. They're like, yeah, it's fine. I don't want to know what's going Meanwhile, on. Meanwhile, we're going to prep. So so go <laughs> back. So go back to what you were saying. Urban, urban farming. Yep. I'm pulling it up right now because uh, one of the things I had, maybe if, if you're in the discord and you have you've had these ideas or maybe you've tried it. Grow, like the hydroponic stuff, the the what's really popular in Canada, and that's what I'm going to pull up, is uh, railroad car containers. So originally, remember we had Adam Scorgi on the podcast years ago? He did the first documentary, one of the big initial pot docs called The Union and then The Culture High. Well, in The Union, all these people in Canada had buried these huge railroad carts, and they were that's where they, all the grow-ups would, would, would began in parts of Canada where they just put like 10, 20 railroad carts underground and these massive grow ops would happen. With like lights and shit? Yeah, so with light. Mm-hmm. Because it was too frigid up above ground. Right. Okay. So that's what people are doing now with food. And a lot of these urban farmers are um, are now, they're making so much that they're able to, or at least they were prior to the pandemic. They were providing the restaurants with a lot of these microgreens and, and whatever. So then I started looking. I was like, how much land do you need? Because let's be honest, like working outside, isn't necessarily fun unless you really enjoy it. Like with that, Thug Nasty does, which we can get into that in a second. Yeah. Great performance. I know you didn't watch it, but it was a phenomenal fight. I can't, man. I can't wait to see it. But go on. Um, he loves it, right? And and I grew up doing that stuff. And you know, when you're forced to do something, you you almost kind of build up a disdain for it. But then you grow up and you understand the necessity of understanding how to do some of those things. So I would look up and I talked to my dad about it too. I was like, hey, how do you, how do you think or how many railroad cards do you think we can get back here to like start growing things? Because my point is, if you're outside, there's a process to it all. Like from cultivating the ground, like, you know, the, the dirt and then prepping it and then maybe building the the greenhouse and then always constantly having the sun beating on you and the vegetation. And then the, what do you the, mean beating on you when you're having to like, m- like clean up, make sure that everything's growing properly. You're watering everything. You're outside in the elements. You yeah. personally, okay. if you're inside of a, of a railroad car uh-huh. or something that's like built with ventilation and shit, yeah. you're not dying from heat exhaustion in Texas heat all the time. Right. Oh, having to tend to your, you having to tend okay. to your crops, which is my biggest point. 
Um, and then the cleaning and that there's a whole process to all these things. So anyway, we just kind of like, I, I throw that stuff around from time to time because it would be cool to have all that shit just in case. And also if you can make it a business on top of it or some kind of uh, community grow up, you know, which small towns should have anyway. I'm surprised there's not one there, but I digress. I bet growing corn might be harder than a bitch, huh? There's some things you don't want to grow because it takes a long time. And, uh, it's just that, that I think that's one of them. Corn, um, I don't know what, like carrots, I think, or maybe watermelons. Certain things that just take too damn long to grow. Yeah. You want like microgreens, but let me try to find the channel. And then what, what, what grows well around here? Like in this fucking humid ass. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Cause all I was looking at was microgreens and things you could do indoors. Oh, Outdoors. Okay. I didn't, didn't really see. Okay. Cause it, it is dependent on your climate. It's so humid. It's so hot. It's going to require a lot of water, certain fertilizer. And then wherever you, St- like fertilizer going up too again. everything's going up yeah so you have to keep that in mind too honestly let's see congratulations you played yourself <laughs> you fucking played yourself boy see boy the media is powerful boy the media just made they they triggered everybody to believing that we live in this uh rate everything is systemically racist and anytime you know, somebody like Trump or DeSantis, we talked about this on the last episode, uh, on the last RPT. I know this is Chingo Chats. But, like, we were talking about how, like, Snow, Snow the Product was, like, saying, like, and then Florida, they trying to bring that old thing back, racism, and Trump trying to bring that old thing back, racism. And it's like, so, basically, if you listen to his speeches, yeah. it, 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 nothing it was about, oh, and black people this, and brown people that, and... Everything was misconstrued. Even the Muslim ban wasn't technically a ban on Muslims. It was a ban on travel from certain countries who weren't doing a good job of vetting (laughs) or keeping track of motherfuckers. Well, it's like what was going around recently where um, he said Putin, in so many words, he said he called him a genius or that it was a smart move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was taken out of context. Completely out of context. Yeah. Well, he's like, well, duh. Why wouldn't he motherfucker playing chess? Yeah. And all he had to do was say that. And then they cut out the part where he said, and our leaders are dumb. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to go find that, it was from uh, one. I think it was the CPAC speech he gave like a week or so ago. But everybody ran with that little clickbaity, like, you know, from The View to Joy Reid to these people like. To paint a narrative. But the fact still remains. We got a bunch of idiots in charge right now. So peep this. This is a perfect video of what I'm trying to describe. This boy makes ten grand a month growing microgreens in a basement. The people he's so he's about to interview the oh, uh, shit. but he does a lot of crazy the, stuff too, like cool two, stuff. Two two people running a husband and wife team working about forty hours a week, and they're doing those kind of numbers in their basement. So we're gonna go check this basement out and uh, see what it's all about. Curtis, this is a really cool channel. Um, Urban Harvester, I think it is. So in Canada, they have basements. A lot of them have basements because of just temperature and it's just the way the houses are built, I guess. And it's not that big. Look how small it is. Basements are convenient. I um, like basements. I wish we had basements. Yeah. My name is David. My name is Kristen. We live in Airdrie, Alberta, and this is our little microgreen farm. Micro Acres. We're again in Airdrie, Micro Alberta, acres. just a little bit north of Calgary. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting in about 400 square feet of germinating area. Uh, and grow area. We're running right now about 170 racks, give or take between both germinating off to your left here. So this is kind of where everything kind of starts. So right now we have about 70 trees kind of growing. Everything goes had it. So in those trays are more plants. Uh, other things we do, stacked peas, radishes, sunflowers. Popcorn. We have uh, popcorn growing right here. Popcorn. Just kind of germinating. Kind of do this. Oh, Keep nice. it nice and simple. There you go. Beauty. So about five days in on those guys. And they're covered. That's got interesting. Some micro yeah. leak germinating up there. So these guys are running about two days old right now. So just starting to pop up a little bit. They run about a six day cycle before they go under the light. And that shit mm-hmm. gotta be dark. At a certain point, and then once they start to sprout, you put yeah. them in the light. Oh. I wonder what the, is this dude a scientist by trade? Like, no, he's just a, what do you call him? I wonder what his background is. Done. Yeah. We use, um, everything's biodegradable, compostable, corn. And let me say this real week. quick. Pause real quick. Um, if anybody's looking to get into like, you know us, man, we're always hustling. We're always thinking of side hustles and entrepreneur. Like me, I, because right now, bro, like my brain is 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 totally like my subconscious, right? Because we're the head of the house. We're the men of the house, yeah. right? 
you know, they're going to be looking at us like, motherfucker, fix some shit. Figure like, it out. Motherfucker, you don't know how to make a knot. You don't know how to chop wood. You don't know how to make a fire. You ain't like Thug Nasty. You ain't got goats. You ain't got chickens. What the fuck you going to do? We what are we going to eat? We over here looking goofy. You got a fucking this uh, doomsday prepper food in buckets. That's only going to last so fucking long. Anyway, as your subconscious is trying to figure out, okay, what can I hustle? Okay, we got this. We got that. You know, there's a, a plethora of options. Anything that falls under like food... To me right now, it's like it's like my brain is kind of like okay, yeah, keep that on the on the on the burner, like to really marinate on that because, you know, oh, I'm gonna screen print some things and people are gonna want hoodies with sayings on them, you know, people are gonna want caps and it's like okay, at one point, people are gonna need motherfucking tamales or food or something and um, like. You know, that that operation they have going in their basement, that could easily be like, this is where we fold the shirts and this is where we keep the stickers and this is where we mail out the stuff. And that can eat that that space could do a, a, a multitude of things. Right. Yeah. But the fact that it's like food related, it's like instant demand. Right, right, right. So I'm going to watch a little These bit more containers of this. Oh, okay. Out of a uh, company out of Los Angeles. So we use three different sizes, two for retail and two for wholesale. If I and sent this, yeah, this video to my wife, she'd be like, boy, you don't know how to do none of that so shit. Pretty much. I can learn. Yeah. Simultaneously 24 uh, seven. One of Kirst's favorites here, he just shows here is our micro leak, mm -hmm. which is growing quite nicely right now. So these ones are running at about two weeks. I wonder right how now. they got their clientele. These are running at nine it's, days. This so type of food is strictly for restaurants. People don't be microgreens. Yeah. That's not a staple. No, it's not. A lot of it's like a, Green juices, or if you want to do like wheatgrass shots, salads. University of Calgary actually takes quite a bit of our product as they developed a whole new program for bringing health nutrition to the students. So they did a big revamp last year and added a bunch of food stations. So we do about nine different greens to them, one of them being wheatgrass so they can do the juicing, radishes, broccoli, and they're adding that really cool culture of healthy, you know, microgreens to their products instead of having the typical cafeteria you know cafeteria food, food mm -hmm. pizzas the brown golden crust stuff right mm -hmm. so it's really nice to be able to work with them yeah. and work with their chefs and we're seeing that a lot in the calgary region is that chefs are starting to love uh, you know microgreens as a nutritional valuation but also an approachable affordable price mm -hmm. yeah and so that yeah so it's just interesting stuff fascinating that they created a business out of their basement and i wonder how they got into that like what was their background that they just pivoted I think he might actually ask him. I'm going to skip around. And they left, I think, that's, their, that's your their full time. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Culinary. And so you've got sort of an in with these guys in a way, and you speak their language. It certainly helped understanding my background. I operated restaurants for the last 15 years, built them, general managed them. So I had the opportunity to work with chefs, understanding food costs, understanding where our food comes from, and ironically, mm -hmm. how much it's actually increased in price over the years. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we try to now. mitigate here at the Bro, farm. I need to ho we, we need to holler Chef Gruel on the side. Be like, hey, hey, pimpin, check this out, player. What's cracking? Where are you like, getting like, your greens from for these restaurants? Real <laughs> Texas? Uh, check this out, Kim folk. Uh, <laughs> you know, once again, I'm coming at you. Uh, <laughs> hey, have you considered uh, patreon.com <laughs> forward slash red pill? Tomatoes? No, but like, seriously, I'd, I'd love to pick, uh, pick his brain because not only is he very in the know about just the global things that are happening in terms of economics. And I mean, he's been featured on multiple, I'm talking about Chef Guru, multiple news outlets and shit, uh, including Fox News, who took a portion of the billion dollars that uh, the Biden administration gave out for favorable coverage of that, the jabs. Right. So we'll talk, we'll about, talk that. about that for and sure. Newsmax as well. We'll talk about that on RPT. But anyway, Chef Guru, I'd love to pick his brain to be like, hey, man, based on the trends, based on everything we're seeing with fertilizer costs, fuel costs, pr prices, cost of goods, uh, the truckers, it's going to cost them more to transport your stuff, yeah. ingredients, commodities, everything is going up. And Jen Psaki going to hop on TV and be like, well, because Russia, Ukraine, that's why it's all Putin, you know, Vladimir. <laughs> Take a kickboxing class, get a margarita. But I'd love for, to see if Chef Gruel says, look, player, check this out. You know what I'm saying? What if he was like, look, man, corn ain't going to go up right away. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, dude, we had, Del I cracked a joke about Delia Tamales on stage in McAllen. Uh, I, I hit the stage and I was like, boy, I ain't been out here since gas was $2 a gallon. You know, and then I said, uh, 
What is going on with the price of menudo? Menudo is $7.50 a pound. This is cow stomach. Very expensive. Cow stomach, damn near the price of bacon. Cow stomach, $7.50 a pound. Anyway, and then I went real quick, and I went on to say, uh, I was like, God damn. I was like, Delia Tamales, you know, I went over there trying to get a dozen of cream cheese and jalapeno. They want $12 a dozen, you know, which is, you know, but they're machine made. So, right. like, so I was like, damn, Delia, I know you, I know you famous, but shit, let me get some. <laughs> okay. You know what? Never mind. Let me get, the, let me get the pork ones. You know, um, y'all got any machine made back there? How were they, by the way? The jalapeno and, um, and cream cheese. I had never, have you ever had that? Never. I've never had, and I'm the tamale kingpin. I done made all kinds of tamales. I ain't never had cream cheese. And jalapeno, not cream cheese. I've had rajas, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Different type of cheese, uh, rajas con queso. But um, those were very good. The cream cheese and jalapeno. Oh, you just mean in general, like the combination of cream cheese and jalapeno? No, in a tamale. Oh, in a tamale. Okay, okay. Yeah, in a tamale. I've never had that. Uh, then they had some, uh, the, the number two pick that was also good for uh, that we ordered was um, chicken, I guess green chili chicken or chicken and green chili. That, those were really good. Uh, and then the pork ones were run of the mill. They're basic. They're you know standard. Yeah, standard issue. Standard issue tamales. Pork tamale. So it's funny that this conversation came up and we started talking about this kind of topic. And I bring up Urban Farmer. His name's Curtis Stone, by the way. I haven't watched any of his videos in a long time just because it's my feed hasn't been given it given it to me. So it's a lot of political stuff. It's a lot of like history stuff, and it just pushes out the stuff I was watching two years ago. So I come back to the channel. We're talking about it today, and he just released a documentary uh, in February. It's about him, how him and his wife went 365 days of only uh, consuming what they hunted, what they caught, what they harvested, and, and raised. So here's a trailer for it. I'm going to play it real quick. I haven't seen this. Wow, this is so sufficient. Yeah, it's, it's what's it called? What's it called? Self-reliance. Uh, yeah. Official trailer, 365, a year-long journey of self-reliance. On the couch one night and watching the news. The World Health Organization has just declared that this is a pandemic and seeing what was going on all over the world. We've seen the empty shelves in grocery stores as people panic shop. Pender is magical to me. From the moment I got here, I knew there was something different, but we rely on fairies importing from the mainland. Oh, him. Not knowing what level it would escalate to was frightening. One night, Chris came with this crazy idea to live off the land and be completely self-sufficient. Being on the ocean and spending time here as a kid, I was fairly confident in my fishing skills and knew that we'd be able to crab and prawn and and rely on the ocean a lot for our food. I didn't have any gardening skills. I didn't have any farming or agricultural background. I knew there was a lot I was going to have to learn. We knew it would be tough, but we also knew we could do it. Bro, you know how to pluck a chicken? No. Um, looked like they were feeding a little pig milk mm-hmm. like a child, like a baby. And I used to do that as a kid, too. And they're probably going to eat that hoe later, huh? Yeah. Well, we didn't. We always sold it at auction, but yeah, I still fed it. So how much could you get for a, a pig at an auction, like a fat-ass grown pig? Quite a bit. We didn't do pigs. We just did cows and, and bulls and stuff. So, I mean, it depending on the size of it, I don't know what the price of beef is right now, what it's selling for. I would imagine you're getting more because it's so expensive, or I don't know if the if, if your price goes down because it's costing... It's costing you more to raise it. Right, you exactly. you got to fatten it up. Exactly, I mean, damn, exactly. how much does that cost? So, you know, your, your typical heifer or whatever might or steer or something might be you know 600 pounds or 500 pounds and you might end up getting the equivalent of that you know times two if the pound is like two something per pound so it just depends but also you got to keep in mind how much you've put into it hay wise feed wise all that kind of stuff giving it it's a uh, it's uh dewormers and all this kind of stuff ivermectin <laughs> <laughs> you, how dare you you bitch you <laughs> Um, uh, so, uh, hey, man, maybe I'm just going to have to make media. <laughs> but like, Chingo, you don't know how to pluck a chicken. You don't know how to, you ain't ready to kill a motherfucking animal with your bare hands. A 60 second it. dog went real quick from like, you know what? Maybe I just stick to media, you know? Like, yeah, because I'm like, hold on, bro. You got to do all that. I'm 40 right now. I got to I, I gotta learn all this now. Yeah. So I'm going to stop podcasting. So I oh, man, sorry, Rob. I got to pluck chickens. And, <laughs> you know, we got to eat chicken for dinner. So I got to go out there and catch it and kill him and pluck him and boil yeah. him and crank his neck out of its fucking spine. That's what shit. I'm saying, man. Yang, 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 yang. Ah, then it runs around headless. and oh, Yeah. It's just not for me. It's just not for me anymore. 
Well, that's crazy, bro. I don't know what the fuck we're going to do. Uh, man, I missed the Thug Nasty fight, brother. You did. It was a great fight. So you didn't catch any of it. You obviously were performing. You were on stage yeah. already? or, or Well, not only that. On? Even when the show's done, you still got to go greet the fans. Of course, and, of course. And then after that, you hungry. You got to get with the team. and Yeah. That's true. So, yeah, I, was, I ain't see shit. Any highlights by chance? Have they released any highlights of the I, All I really saw was him talking to the guy in the ring and his, and his speech going viral of like, hey, what, what's your opinion about Russia, Ukraine? Uh, we don't know what's happening over there. Oh, yeah. You know what's so crazy, bro? Um, and I know that's getting into RPG territory. But... I feel like people underestimate him so much. They oh, think yeah. they they hear the accent, they hear Arkansas, and these coastal elites, these New York, LA people think that it's just a bunch of country bumpkins. I learned this during the, the music business. The music business people are mainly based in LA and New York, right? Mm -hmm. They look at us as country bumpkins like they just fly over. But they learned very quickly when they came down to Texas and tried to sign us and do business with us, you got motherfucking, you got your Slim Thugs, your J Princes, you know what I'm saying? Like, you couldn't fool, uh, you couldn't fool us all. Yeah. And we weren't going <laughs> to take fuck deals. All. But anyway, um, Thug Nasty's speech, you know, answer went viral where he's like, I will dig my dirt in that ground. You know, and, I, and it's funny because there was a poll that came out where a bunch of the Democrats were like, yeah, if we get invaded, we're leaving. It was mainly Democrats mm -hmm. that were like, yeah, why would we stay and fight for this racist ass country? <laughs> 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 ah, yo, boy, they got you. They tricked y'all. You've been bamboozled. And then all the all the patriots who've been called motherfucking the salt of the earth, domestic terrorists, uh, seditionists, Trump tards. They're all like, we're going to fucking stay and fight for this bitch. Dude, uh, not only did Greg Hardy come out to Morgan Wallen, but he fucking got he lost in the first round, which is I mean, I'm I'm not a fan. You know, his track um, pass really makes me not like him now. I know people can. What song? He came out to Broadway Girls okay. with uh, was it a little dirt. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good song, you know, yeah. but uh, I thought that was funny. No, but back to Thug Nasty. I you can ask Don this, too. Halfway through the fight, maybe in the second round, um, you could just hear, like, it's not like Rogan doesn't know who he is. It's not like the commentators don't know how how good he's been doing. But there was just so much doubt because uh, Thug Nasty was the favorite against Edson Barbosa, which is a, anybody that's a huge MMA fan knows, like, that was a tough fight. Like, on paper, uh, just, you know, resume-wise, it's like, damn, that's a tough fight for Bryce. He goes out there, and he's so, I mean, you look at the two, and, like, Edson Barbosa is a specimen of a human being. You just see him, and you're like, holy shit, he's a super athlete. You're like a Bryce. He's just like an unassuming yeah, regular yeah, dude, right? Yeah, slim. Uh -huh. Slim, but also just like not, uh, he doesn't seem imposing, like if you were to yeah, come up on him. Yeah. It, like there's a, a Theo posted that clip from the podcast where he's like, if you ever got into a bar fight, would you, would tell, you tell him? And he's like, no, <laughs> they going to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, right. I even told Don, I was like, I'm not really digging the way Rogan's down downplaying uh, Bryce's abilities here. Why would he say? Everybody, I mean, him and, and uh, who was it? Bisping, I think, and then John Anik. More so Rogan was just like, you know, it's going to be really tough for Bryce Mitchell to, you know, combat with Edson's, you know, quickness and his kicks and this, that, and the other, and then dominates first round, second round. You know, it's kind of surprising that Bryce Mitchell's, you know, still the, the odds favorite, this, that, and the other. And I was like, look, motherfucker, like, he's really, really good. And he cooked him to the bone like he said he was gonna. It was so impressive. Man, I need to watch it, bro. I'm going to have to go in there and pay. <laughs> I wish it was a five-round fight. Like, that was mm. just a... I'm going to have to pay punk as ESPN in this economy <laughs> just to watch a couple rounds and shit. It'll come out to I mean, ESP, it should be on ESPN Plus. Uh, like the Somebody on Discord send me the bootleg. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the way to do it. I could just give it to him myself, but, you know. Ah, oh, motherfucking Rob. <laughs> come on, man. Pull it up. Uh, uh, yeah, man. So uh, congrats to Bryce Mitchell. Uh, I'm glad that people are, are – he's trying to get on people's radar – especially do like all the conservative like republican type pages of course they were running with it like uh donald trump jr benny johnson i mean you name it i think he's on tucker carlson tonight is he i think he's gonna be on tucker tonight yes he tweeted i'm gonna be on tucker carlson tomorrow wow but um yeah super proud uh it's very inspiring especially just how he lives you know off the mat you know what i mean yeah his uh his his whatever dojo slash barn is fucking dope. He's got tractors and wheelchairs and then fucking his oh, mats. Yeah. yeah, his wheelchairs. He's like, why yeah. why do I have this wheelchair? He's like, for one, uh, this is a two hundred fifty dollar wheelchair. I got it for forty dollars. I got two of them. I <laughs> got that one four dollars too. Yeah, awesome um, man, awesome, awesome, awesome. Hang on, actually, I might be able to. 
Wait a minute. Everybody get your blood pressure down before we go into RPT and start talking about all these uh, debacles. I'll give it to you. They, I, I didn't know they put it up right away. Oh, what is this? Full fight. This is the oh, fight. Oh, yeah, yeah. shit. We can't play it on the stream on the here because this is on YouTube. But uh, yeah, because we stay getting emails about like, oh, you played uh, a segment of this or whatever. Do you want me to just you want to watch it later in your own time so I don't spoil any of it for you, or do you want to see some of it? I mean, you could skim through some okay. parts. Yeah. Barboza has five inches on him. On yeah, he has reach. a huge reach advantage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So for listeners here, I pulled it up on my ESPN Plus account. I told Chingo, usually it used to be a couple of days they would put oh. it on Fight Pass. But I guess now they put everything pretty quickly on ESPN Plus. Bryce Mitchell with the farmer's tan. Yeah, straight he, up. He's got the real tree, venom shorts. He started throwing kicks right back at him. Like right from the jump, he was throwing kicks back at Edson every time. I mean, one yeah, for one. He, he's like chasing him. He, he's like he, going after he him. He put the pressure on the entire time. He's always pushing forward, almost never went backwards. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So kick oh. for kick, kick for kick in the first round. Oh, 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 yeah. oh shit. I forgot about that. Yeah, he hit yeah, him with a big him. left. He hit him, then he went in for the double. And here's where basically this was the beginning of the end. That one knockdown led to this exchange. Uh -huh. And then that's you'll hear Rogan like, you know, it's gonna be very tough to for him to get his hands together and bring him bring him down. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. sure enough, he picks him up. Boom. Oh, tripped him. Yeah. Yep. He's got him up against the cage. Boom. Pulled the arm, yanked the arm. Yeah, and he, that he's in his guard. That continued, man. Round after round, he just dominated. He looked great on his feet too. Hell yeah, man! I can't wait to watch this. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, I'll send it to you after this. Hell yeah, makes me just want to visit Arkansas. <sighs> Dark and salt. Yeah, man. I don't know what we're gonna do, Rob, but we're gonna stay in the city. I mean, I need my 13 year old to hurry up and graduate high school. Like, hurry up. Uh, I, I mean. When you think about it, it's like... I need this babysitter to be comfortable on the highway. I just got my mom for the first time to drive on 59 on last freeway? week. Yeah. Well, you, you were with her and you're like, all right, go ahead and get on. Yep. Well, we did. So my sister's having a baby next week and she doesn't awesome. like... Yeah, it's awesome, right? Congratulations to her. But the more important or the more like daunting part was how the hell is mom going to get to you at any point in time? She doesn't drive on the fucking highway, right? How, how far does your sister live? Not far at all. Literally, it's like six more minutes up the road from where she usually drives. Okay. Okay, but but you got to go on fifty nine. Like it's, it's now you're getting into Sugarland territory. Dicen, no, tengo miedo, mijo. One hundred percent. So, uh, like Wednesday, I think it was during the like morning. Like we started at like nine thirty, ten o'clock when everybody's at work. The roads are pretty clear. We just went back and forth, back and forth. I drove once. And then I drove again two different ways. I was like, I'm going to show you both ways. We're going to drive. And then she's like, okay, pues, a ver, a ver cómo va. You know, sí. we switched seats. And she took it real slow, went one route really slow, and then the other. And that was the first time. She's, been, she's fucking been in America 40 years. She's never driven just six minutes the other direction. It's always like in this one little confined area, kind of like Luisa, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, all right, I'm proud of you. Fantastic. So now you're going to have to do it by yourself. And she's like, pues a ver, no sé. Hay con yeah. ese día. It's tough, man. It's tough. I got to figure out how I'm going to be an urban farmer, bro. I don't know what the fuck going on. Not gonna I don't that. know what the fuck going on in this economy, man. I need I'm gonna have to learn some shit. Can't eat can't live off of microgreens unless you sell it and then you use that to what? Go get fucked at the fucking store. Yes. Just hand it over and get hit with retail distributor fees, the truckers, the gas, calculate all that, the fertilizer, all that for the fucking potato. Yeah, pretty much. You nailed it. And I will talk about more of that on RPT, but I want to bring up on Shingo Chats, which I'll probably still bring it up later on RPT again. Um, shout out Giovanni. He sent me this interesting link. Uh, I got to find it for you real quick. It is a it's a 3D rendering model of of your podcast analytics that show shows that are uh, have similar audiences. So you put in your podcast and it's like an aggregate. It, t it takes all the people that. Uh, are subscribed to different, you know, feeds, iTunes, Spotify, whatever, and then it goes by, I guess, their sh the shows that they listen to in conjunction with yours on their list and what they have favorited. Giovanni sent you this direct on Discord, yeah, private, yeah. Oh, I know when I ain't seen this shit. Oh, I can't wait. Let yeah, see so this. <laughs> pull it up real quick. So I appreciate people like him that that have like suggestions or ideas or have resources that they think will help the show. Um, that's that's a prime example of how the show is going to grow. It's going to be as grassroots as it gets, right? It's it's the only way. Uh, but yeah. Is like Arkansas a red state? It's ha yeah, it's got to be. Because that's where uh, Juan Big Stoner lives, right? North Northwest Arkansas. Oh, really? I, I didn't believe know. so, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll see if it's a red state or not. Because if Texas turns motherfucking blue, what you going to do? 
If Texas turns blue, what you going to do? Oh, I saw this car the other day. It had the Bethel sticker. It had all the woke lefty stickers. And then on the rear view mirror, what do you think was hanging on there? Mm, I don't know. 55 fucking masks. No way. Yeah. A whole bunch of masks. That's so Hanging gross. on the rear view mirror. Because, of course, you know, to them, this shit ain't over yet. They're not ready to get rid of the mask. And it was just, it was comical. So here it is. Um, and one of the interesting points or parts of this whole little thing, when I looked it up, I looked up RPT and then I looked up Chingo Chats. The audiences are dramatically different. Like people that listen to Chingo Chats are listening to other comedic shows, other really? entertainment shows. Something to keep in mind. Yeah. And people that are listening to RPT are listening to what you would expect uh, them to listen to people in this, in this kind of Let's sphere. Let's see this. So... I can only zoom in and then I can rotate it this way. So wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So again, shout out Giovanni for this. Oh look, resource. her lounge, her lounge. I know. Podcast. I know. So look, look like at the RPT is a nucleus here in the middle, right? It, uh, okay. I imagine, Jocko. Yeah. I imagine if it, the the closer it is, the more in, in relation the the audience is with our audience. Uh, look at that branch where it goes off louder or crowder. Who's that? Chad. Chad. Chad Prather. He hit me up. Shout out to him. So and that, that audience, as you would imagine, is pretty close. Ben Shapiro, um, here, picture, picture uh, Ruben, what's his name? Dave Rubin. Yeah, Dave Rubin, Louder or Crowder. Is that Candace Owens? Yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, and then over here we have, um, what is that? With, oh, Michael Berry, Tim, Ka Tim Pool, uh, Her Lounge, Chingo Chats, Sam Tripoli. Shout out to Sam Tripoli. Yeah. King and the Sting, Uncle Joey. Conspiracy Social Club. Uh, Cash Daddies. Oh, uh, George Perez. <clears throat> this is really, 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 really cool because I know some of these people. Right. Look, I know Michael Berry, Chad Prather, Sam Tripoli, uh, George Perez. This is really, really cool that like not only do you have stuff in common with these people, but like, oh, Red Pill America. Yeah. We, we were supposed to get her on the uh, on the show, but I don't know what happened. War Room Pandemic, um, Human Events Daily. Jack Posobiec. So the resource, I forgot the name of this. Is there a name down here in the corner? I can't see it from it here. It says, what is this? No, uh, I think there was a company. There was a company Re named Refonic. Some, Refonic. So yeah. they're a platform. I haven't looked into them. i just looking at these models, but they're... Is that homeboy right there? Uh, right, to the right. Go to the right. Up. The CBD guy. Up. Yeah, you wait. Up under Jocko. I on, oh, okay, Look, okay, go okay. down. Down. Oh, down. Down. Oh, down. Oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. it's 3D, right my here. G. <laughs> Who, is that homeboy? Yeah. Um, okay. John? Yeah, Burke? From, from Shell Shock. Okay, cool. Yeah, we know a lot of these people. Look, okay. So their thing is like they bring audiences together with for advertisements and for cross color like collaborations and how to like book guests and whatever for interviews. And you can pitch it in the sense that like, look, like our audiences are already, they're, they're kind of cross pollinating from time to time, I guess, or however you want to phrase it. I, this guy, I want to have him on. Um, the, fuck, I forgot his name off the top of my head, but Rebel Capitalist is a really, really good show. Um, look at Michaela Peterson. Yeah. Peter Schiff, Rich Dad, uh, Lex Friedman. I mean, we're in good company in terms of like... Like the audience is... Yeah. yeah, people listen to us and also listen to these other people. So then now let me pull up uh, Jingo Jazz. Uh-oh. It's on, it's on an... Oh, it's just like I was a little surprised that they were this this different, but maybe not. I don't know. All right, let's look at this. Uh, uh, La Platica, that's um, the makeup girl and her, and her husband. Um, uh, drink was that drink champs breakfast club womp womp. <laughs> womp womp what else okay her lounge podcast my vieja uh, oh, that's cash daddy uh, uh, Theo Vaughn uh, again a lot of Sam Tripoli shows uh, Michael Berry once again fighter and the kid uh, Burt Cass Honeydew, Two Bears, One Cave, Tiger Belly, Gin Whisker Gin what is it? Whiskey Ginger, uh, Delia, Chris Delia. Delia, and Chris Stefano. So a lot of the comedy, a lot of these are under the comedy umbrella on on the uh, Your mom's directory. house. Very interesting. Yeah. So and then some political stuff as well. A few, yeah, but as you can tell, it's it's uh, is it further or closer? Well, it's, it's actually closer than the rest of them, so that makes sense. This some is of these, so cool. Yeah, looking. some of these other ones are. Like like way over here. It's oh look at this. Oh my God! Hi with George Lopez and what's up, fool? And Doctor Drew and George Perez. But notice shout how it's out further George Perez. To, yeah, shout out how it's further away though than all the yeah, other. Yeah, it needs to be. Some <laughs> of those need to be very further. Yeah. 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 So I just thought you'd find that interesting. So we'll probably use this resource, Giovanni, as a something in the future to you know 
dictate who we reach out to yeah million dollars a game uh and then you got charlemagne show yeah some of these yeah joe budden a lot of woke shout out to oh look look you see 85 south yeah so dude they had fauci on they i saw that because fauci right now is doing no offense uh, 85 south is a is a they're really really funny Mm -hmm. but they they had Fauci first doing all the mainstream like political like mm-hmm. in your grill yeah and now they <clears throat> he's been demoted you know he's missing right now he's in witness protection he's missing right now because the nine pages single space size eight Times New Roman did you see that the oh, Pfizer yeah. documents oh yeah the Pfizer documents came out so now you got uh what's his name Fauci he got time to do a Zoom call with uh, Carl, uh Carlos. Yeah, Carlos Miller and uh, and them cats. Yeah. So, anywho, DC um, Young Fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, Hello, I, DC Young Fly. Good morning. You know the African American community needs to get their medicine. They need to. They need to come take their medicine. You know, they need to come to Brooklyn and uh, get the medicine. Basically, doing damage you. control. Right? Wouldn't you see see it that way? Uh, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what the fuck he be. Um, I didn't see it. I didn't really watch it. I might have skimmed through some parts. Yeah, no, I just skimmed through that one clip. But uh, yeah, so that's all I got for for you today. <laughs> yeah, so we re- yeah we've realized that um I need to figure out if I'm gonna get into farming or not. We need to figure out like farming gonna, or fighting. You gonna get into uh, you got to get an acre. Like what 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 we doing here? What what's going on? You know what I'm saying? But hey, that was a very cool resource and and thank you to everybody that um includes our shows as part of their listening regimen you know what i'm saying like we we part of your list we want to stay in your grill we want we appreciate being in your ear holes week after week we want to make it worth your time oh you know what let me just bring this up too in that same uh, exchange giovanni and i were having about that resource he was he had mentioned something and i've gotten this from from a lot of other people so i'm just pointing him out because he we're talking about him right now but um he had an interesting line here in one of his messages where we we're talking about just the content that we put out and you know we, we can tell he enjoys it a lot of people that like uh that interact regularly with us on there which by the way yesterday you guys were being you guys were being ridiculous did you see the exchanges yesterday these socios were being on the discord how so they're they were asking for a socio rpt room like a like a premium socio fucking how, channel what, what, what are y'all trying to do on there bro i was what exactly you don't even want don't even scroll up to these fucking degenerates they were like i hope this doesn't end up on chingo chats hey i saw it it's on chingo chats now you socios i'm not even gonna call y'all out by name but uh and this was on general chat yeah it was on the general chat yesterday for like an hour Sometime, uh, maybe in the morning. Well, I see a lot of sneaker talk. I no, it was before that. It okay. was before that. We're talking about, uh, I'm not even going to say. I'm not even going to repeat some of the things you, these people uh, are saying. Look, man, the world is going to shit. The last thing you want to be doing is wasting your energy. You know, your. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. This can't be real. $9 a gallon? This got to be Photoshop. Where? Uh, Juan Big Stoner posted it. It's $9 a gallon, a gallon at, at Arco. Gas station. That's got to be Photoshop. Did you see the I Am Legend meme yeah. next to the real California cast? Yeah. So I think with that meme, we're assuming that the filmmakers were using their imagination to show such a high gas price right before a zombie apocalypse yeah. happens, right? So I think it's safe to assume that the filmmakers wanted to put a high gas price at, using their imagination, like how bad would gas be before shit hits the fan? You know, so I don't think it's that much of a reach to think that to, we're kind of like assuming and mind reading that mm-hmm. whether it was like, oh, we didn't even oh, with the art department put that in the background. We didn't even you know what I'm saying? You think I, so? I think they had to have been. I think that's oversimplifying it because this movie came out like 15 years ago. Yeah, no, I, th- I think I think they they had to at least have a brief discussion as yeah. to like, hey, what's the gas price going to say? Yeah. We have to think of this dystopian future where right. some shit gets out of a lab type of thing. <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, basically, right? Are we allowed to say that? Nope. But in the okay. exchange, so Giovanni was telling me about just the show and like the kind of stuff we put out and it's entertaining and it's also informative, right? Like bring in the heat, bring in the, the info, which we tried to do, mm-hmm. sprinkled with the uh, entertainment because otherwise, as he said here, 
uh, it's boring. Otherwise, it'll be boring. So I no longer listen to, he goes, it's entertaining, and y'all bring the facts. I don't listen to Shapiro or those other, quote, big names anymore. They're just too boring. Oh. And that is a problem. Like, it's with, not, like, r- relatable enough? Like, they're not clowning? Definitely not. I mean, I know Shapiro does his, uh, for a long time, he's been doing those kind of reaction re- reactionary kind of videos where it's either lips of TikTok or whatever. And Man, somebody on here talking about, on the Discord, it's always cracking. Somebody <laughs> I can make a strong case to melt your nickels, but I can make a strong <laughs> counter argument as well. Uh, and then it's like price of nickel and all this crazy shit. Uh, anyway, go on. No, no, no. It was just I'm that. looking for this like sucio room you were talking about. Oh, dude. Okay. It, White it, House rejects idea of boosting domestic oil production to lower gas prices. Uh, oh, it's above the nickels. I see where you're at. It's 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 uh, it's a bit above that. Uh, let me find a time. I'm really curious what you're talking about because it's like this is we have women on here too so i'm trying to see i know right where y'all going with this um yeah a lot of talk about the gas price um a lot of debate over the ford bronco right because i made some uh comments about the bronco how i said it looked like a little jeep oh but speaking of the bronco while you're scrolling up Mm -hmm. a a good amount of ways uh somewhere in the afternoon yesterday i think um they're halting as of yesterday as of 3-7, Ford has halted the pre-orders of the 2022 because of semiconductor issues. So oh, it's already happened. The microchips cannot even order anymore. And, that's, and this is before China takes over Taiwan. Yep. So it's already on back order. That, that's, I'm curious. Uh, do you know like why there's a shortage? I pulled up the article to okay. talk about an RPT. But, All right, uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Anyway, I still can't find what you were saying. It's, it's probably best you don't anyway, yeah, okay. honestly. Okay. But Literally. for all you socios, calmense. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Chingo Chats. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, again, we really, really appreciate being a part of your, um, what is it? How, what do you call that? Like th- your menu spread of your go-to podcast, your, your go-to voices. Yeah, your weekly rotation of shows, right? Yeah, man, next time, bro, we might have to have that machine. Or I don't know if I'm going to get my own or something, but you might have to have your machine right here so we could be hitting them goddamn sound effects and shit thank you thank you (laughs) oh look right here we'll go out with this fresco kicks this is the one i saw just before i came in here uh robin shingo are probably recording right now and they can't use none of this on the discord chat the podcast this shit is too wild i was gonna say the same thing i hope this doesn't end up on chingo chats that was juan big stoner this was all going down at nine in the morning yesterday la verga so we'll uh, we'll let Chingo find that off the podcast so he can roast you guys and be like, I can't. They're believe. talking about your They're talking about Jordan Thirteens. Oh, this all started with an AOC picture and somebody being real sucio about it all. But yeah, we'll see you. Guys. What is this? What when's come out? When this comes out Thursday? So I guess we'll see you guys Friday and we have already seen you on Wednesday. Yeah, this Discord. There's a lot happening. Yeah, man, uh, it's um, good. We appreciate it. Okay, yeah, I'm, I gotta find that AOC thing. <laughs> I see a Spider Man meme. Send us out. Uh, okay. Thank you guys so much for tuning <laughs> in. We're about to go record Red Pill Tamales. So uh, we'll see you next stops, Naples, Florida, uh, West Palm Beach, and so much more. Hit up Chingobling.com. Join the newsletter. Stay in the loop. You know, in case we get deplatformed, debanked, and everything else that, that, that they're doing to people these days. <laughs> we don't want to get canceled. Thank you. Y'all be safe. Peace.